friends this video on work energy and power part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com no more fear from exams please make sure that you have watched part 1 and 2 before going ahead with part 3 scalar product obeys commutative law i am very sure that you are aware of these laws because we have studied we are we have been studying these laws from our junior classes. So when it comes to scalar pro commutative law for scalar product, what is commutative law? It is A dot B is equal to B dot A. Where A and B are two vectors. So this is our commutative law. Very similar to the commutative law for normal numbers. When I say distributive law, distributive law will again remain the same just that these are vectors. That is A dot B plus C will be equal to A dot B plus A dot C. Friends, just to make a note, I am mentioning here that the scale. <coughs> scalar products are also known as dot product. Scalar product is also known as dot product. That is because of the dot which we use. So when I say A dot B, I mean to say scalar product of A and B. Okay, so distributive law is A dot B plus C is equal to A dot B plus A dot C. Now let us consider a special case. We will consider a case where scalar product is equal to 0. Okay, now let us consider a vector A. Now, if I want to find the scalar product of A dot A, this, is, this one is the first case we are considering. That is scalar product of a vector with itself. That is A dot A. What will be A dot A? A dot A would be magnitude of A into magnitude of A into cos theta. What would be theta? Theta would be 0 because both are the same vectors. Now, what is 0? Cos 0 is 1. So, we can say this is equal to magnitude of A into magnitude of a. Now what can we write this? This can be a square because this is nothing. They, these are not vectors anymore. These are just scalar. Magnitude of a is scalar. Now let us consider another scenario. Let us suppose that we have two vectors a and b. If we say that the scalar product of a and b is equal to 0. Let us suppose this is given. We know that Scalar product of A and B is equal to 0. So what do we conclude from this? From this we conclude that mod of A into mod of B into cos theta where theta is the angle between A and B. This is equal to 0. So from this we infer that cos theta is equal to 0. Or from this we can say theta is equal to 90 degree. Right? So that would mean that A and B are perpendicular to each other. That means if the dot product of two different vectors is 0, then the two vectors are perpendicular to each other. Right? So if two dot product of two vectors is equal to 0, then the two vectors are perpendicular to each other. So in the first case, we saw a scenario that is the dot product of a vector with itself is non-zero and it is equal to the magnitude of the two vectors. Basically, this heading is uh, incorrectly written. This, this corresponds to the second scenario basically where scalar product is equal to zero. So here we are just discussing, we discussed certain special cases. Right? Now, so till now what all did we study about scalar product? Scalar product is also known as dot product. It is basically product of two vectors to give a scalar. It is defined as a dot b is equal to a b cos theta. If the scalar product of two vectors is equal to zero, that means the two vectors are perpendicular to each other. Scalar product of a vector with itself is equal to the square of the magnitude of that vector. Clear? I hope it is clear to you now. Now let us go ahead and solve two small problems on scalar product so that the idea of scalar product is very clear to you and we can freely go ahead with work. 
Let us take the first problem. It says find the angle between vectors 2i plus j minus k and i minus k. So here we are given two vectors. Let us suppose we consider a is one vector. What is that vector? 2i plus j minus k. Let us consider the other vector as v. That is given as i minus k. Now we have to find the angle between the two vectors. That means we have to find theta. Now before we start let us calculate what would be the magnitude of a. What would be the magnitude of a? It will be equal to root over this is of the form ax i cap plus ay j cap plus az k cap. So normally what is the magnitude of a? It is given by ax square plus ay square plus az square. I am very sure you have studied all these basic vector relations in your mathematics. So what is ax in this case? 2. So this will be 2 square plus ay is 1. 1 square plus az is minus 1 plus minus 1 square. So this is root over 6. Similarly, let us calculate mod of b that is the absolute value of b. So this will be equal to root over bx square plus by square plus bz square. So what is bx in this case? 1. What is by? by is not there. j cap is not at all there. So it is 0. bz is minus 1. So this is equal to root over 2. Now let us apply the scalar product. We know that a dot b is equal to mod a mod b cos theta. So we can write cos theta is equal to a dot b divided by mod a into mod b. Now what will be a dot b? Let us write it like this. a dot b divided by. Now here we can directly write the values. What is the absolute value of a? It is root 6 and for b it is root 2. So we can write it root 6 into root 2. Now let us calculate the scalar product. Just now I told you whenever we have a scalar product this way i dot into k dot i dot i dot k will be 0 i dot j will be 0 so only the i dot i terms will exist and j dot j k dot k so what will be this this will become 2 i cap dot i cap that means 2 will exist plus here j we have 1 but there is no j here so that will be 0 for k we have minus 1 for k we have minus 1 so this will be plus 1, minus 1 into minus 1, plus 1. So 2 plus 1 divided by root over 12. So this will be equal to 3 divided by root over 12. So 3 divided by 2 root 3. This is root 3. So this will be equal to root 3 by 2. So we found that cos theta is equal to root 3 by 2. Now what is root 3 by 2? Root 3 by 2 is nothing but cos 30 degree. Therefore we can say that theta is equal to 30 degree. Correct? So the value of theta is 30 degree. So all you need to know is how to find the dot product or the scalar product between two vectors. I hope it is clear to you now. Let us look at another small problem. It says... Sum and difference of two vectors A and B are perpendicular to each other. Find the relation between the two vectors. Sum and difference of A and B. That means sum of A and B is A plus B. Difference of A and B is A minus B. The question says that A plus B and A minus B are perpendicular to each other. Just before some time we studied that if two vectors say A and B, if A and B are perpendicular to each other, that means that A dot B is equal to 0, right? So 
if we apply this logic then we can say that dot product of this and this vector will be equal to 0 right so that means a plus b dot a minus b is equal to 0 right now let us do the calculation this will be equal to a dot a minus a dot b plus b dot a minus b dot b so this is equal to 0 now what did what will be a dot a we also studied this before that a scalar product of any vector a with itself is equal to the square of the magnitude of the vector that means a dot a will be a square similarly b dot b will be b square now what about a dot b now a dot b let us keep it as a dot b now according to commutative law a dot b is equal to according to commutative law a dot b is equal to b dot a right so instead of b dot a we can write a dot b correct so this minus a dot b and plus a dot b will get cancelled so we are left with a square minus b square is equal to 0 that is a square is equal to b square or we can say a is equal to b therefore what did we observe so what find the, the question asked find the relation between the two vectors so what is the relation the relation is that magnitudes of a and b are equal that is what we concluded right so now you can see that it is very simple to apply scalar product it is just one formula which you should remember which is a dot b is equal to a b cos theta where theta is the angle between the two vectors a and b now that you are clear with what is scalar product now we will start with what we wanted to study in this chapter that is work energy and power so we will study each of them one by one first we will start with work now we will see what is work in terms of physics we will take several examples we will see the relation of work with energy and we will understand things graphically as well so let us go ahead thank you visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more Thanks once again.